Hi, I'm Katherine Watkins, publisher of Hydrocarbon Processing, and I'm here at the beautiful Gaylord Resort in Grapevine, Texas, and I'm sitting here this morning with J.D. Slaughter, the president of S&B Engineering, and constructors. just wanted to <laughs> engineering constructors. That's right, yes. Constructors, right? That's right, that's correct. So I just wanted to take a few minutes to ask you a few questions. Sure. Since we're here together. So, if you don't mind, can you tell us a little bit about S&B and your markets and who you serve? Sure, sure. S&B was founded by my grandfather, Jimmy Slaughter Sr., and Dr. Bill Brookshire in 1967. So, 54-year-old wow. company. Um, we're uh, headquartered in Houston, Texas, but we have 32 offices throughout the United States and interna internationally. Uh, we're in the oil and gas and chemical space, so midstream refining, petrochemicals, chemicals. We're also in the energy transition and industrial space. Uh, we do work in... Um, in power, um, and, and then also in the federal market and infrastructure, also naval architecture. So we're a pretty diverse company. Uh, and we're a, an EPC company, design build, EPC, is really our core co our competency. Awesome. So what new practices has SMB adopted to increase project um, efficiencies? Well, you know, it's, it's, there's some new, but there's some old tried and true. Uh, just like everyone got on the uh, advanced work packaging, work packaging bandwagon, uh, we've been doing that really um, for at least 25 years. Um, I think they're calling it advanced now, but really it's work packaging, uh, our work. We've been doing EPC work for over 50, 50 years. Um, and then in the mid-80s or so, we started investing in our systems. So we truly have EPC front end all the way through construction systems, turnover systems. Um, yeah, we have some new visualization tools that are out in the marketplace, but I tell you, uh, Mike Jennings yesterday at the conference talked about, uh, he's CEO of Holly Frontier, and they asked him what he learned about project delivery, and he said, front-end planning, front-end planning, don't accelerate schedules, and I thought, that's exactly right. Um, so our efficiency is gained by proper front-end planning, designing the work for construction, and letting construction drive the work. And that's something my grandfather started 50 years ago. Uh, my father, our chairman emeritus today, um, is still, um, uh, you know, still espousing and us, we're following that lead. So it's not just what's new, it's what's old and still works that's important to us. Tried and true. Absolutely, right? yeah. absolutely. absolutely. So tell us a little bit about workforce development, your program there and how it's shaping sort of the next generation. Absolutely. Um, I remember when I first started at SMB a while ago, sitting in a meeting with my father, he let me come sit in his executive leadership team meeting, and he decreed everyone who worked, chose to work for SMB would be given the opportunity for skills upgrade training. If they're a journeyman pipe fitter and they want to learn to be an electrician, we're going to pay for it. Yeah. We had no construction at the time. <laughs> we had zero. And it was all cost plus back then. So customer wasn't going to pay for it. In fact, we had a customer tell us, you know, paying for workforce development is like trying to desalinate the ocean one cup at a time. He's not going to pay for it. So we had to figure out how to compete in the marketplace but provide training to everyone. So that's 25, 30 years of experience to, that brings us to today where everybody's given the opportunity. We have a, a career enhancement center and training center in, in Houston, but every job site, we build a training facility on site to provide skills upgrade training for people on the job and right after work. So it's very important to us uh, to invest in, in the people who choose to work for us. We also have an apprenticeship program for women, for veterans, and with the rodeo committee, we've started hiring some of these high schoolers and putting them through our uh, apprenticeship program as well. So lots of... Um, emphasis on workforce development. That's, that's awesome. So if we had a young person who's interested in coming into the, into the sector, um, into working for a company like us, what, what would be kind of your words of advice to that? Well, you know, person? we did a study um, through the Greater Houston Partnership in Houston. Uh, how do people get into construction? Like, how do they get in the industry? We're talking about improving the pipeline of students coming to the industry. But you know, to, in order to improve something, you have to measure it and see how it's done. Mm -hmm. And we found that 85% of people got in our industry because they knew somebody. They had a family or a friend connection in the industry. Yeah. So we wanted to make that, uh, we wanted to make, improve the pipeline of people who aren't connected in our industry. There are underserved uh, populations that aren't in our industry. Yeah. How do we get them in? Mm -hmm. So for us, it's investing in high school programs. It's trying to improve 
some of the community college programs that are out there. It's, it's our own apprenticeship programs that we have at the company. Um, and it's communicating to people in the industry. And I don't think we have to do a really big job of doing, a, a, a better job of doing that. I think people understand there's careers to be had in our industry. They just want to know how to get in. And I encourage yeah. other companies. And like we did, like other people in the, in the Greater Houston Partnership pro, um, survey that did, analyze how people are getting in your, in, in your company and improving that pipeline. Yeah, yeah, no, awesome. Yeah. You mentioned the Houston Livestock uh, Show and Radio. Absolutely. And I heard yesterday so that the, um, the spirit of the ECC award right, went, went right. to that. So what, I think if I didn't misunderstand, that was sort of your idea. Well, actually, I... I, um, it was a collective idea amongst people. Uh, my business partner, uh, Brooke Brookshire, who's our CEO, um, met with a vice, a vice president of the rodeo at a, at a function. And they were lamenting the fact that the rodeo is a huge scholarship program, millions upon millions of dollars going to kids going to college. But what can we do to those kids who, who want to get into the workforce directly? And so they had been doing some things with community colleges, and they weren't seeing a lot of fruit. Mm. And Brooke said, have I got a guy I need you to meet? And so he brought him to the, the office and we had a conversation. And so it, it, it was me and our workforce development director, Mike Stilley, uh, Chris Bowman who at the time was not the CEO at the time, but he was, um, I think a senior vice president or something. And, and we had this conversation and, and then it, it was a collective thought bubble uh, really that, that, that burst in the room that said, what if we created a competition? And we designed and procured materials for high schools and, and equipment because they, they're very under under equipped yeah. and we provided the instruction on the pedagogy and the didactics for teaching kids how to be in our industry and we mentored them and then at the end of their two semesters or middle of their second semester of high school they would bring their projects to the rodeo to be judged and at the time it was 2019 I think it was April and the rodeo was in March. And in our world, a project is 18 months, <laughs> yeah. two years, right? You have to design, fabricate, build, and, yeah. and, you know, and construct it. And so th they told us, well, let's shoot for 2021. And in the room, we said, no, we're going to get it done in 20 2020. And we did. Um, and so, um, so these kids receive materials. They get a, a project book full of drawings, ISOs, specs, Plots, you know, plans and sections, uh, 3D model. We give them a 3D model of the of the project, awesome. and uh, and then they work collectively to not just build it, but as Chris said yesterday, there's safety. They have to do STAs, they do progress reports, they do a schedule, they schedule their work, and the kids that come through, you know, at the beginning they're absolutely dumbfounded with the amount of material they have, the work ahead of them. They just don't see the end in sight. The instructors are also sort of you know deer in headlights, but. <laughs> Around the time March comes, the project's done. They've had this sense of accomplishment. They've learned a tremendous amount. And best of all, they've, they've incorporated the safety culture of our industry in their shop, in their high school. Yeah. So that's the idea. As Chris said, instead of rewarding a kid at the end with a scholarship to school, we invest up front in their school programs to improve it so that when they graduate, they can come work for a company like ours, Zachary Performance, Turner, ISC, Right and 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 have a career that that's that's ready for them. Well, that's awesome. It's kind of really hearing the creativity on the one hand, thinking outside the box, and then trying. Absolutely, and, and it's not just an SMB thing. Believe me, um, there's over a hundred volunteers in the, in the organization, and the companies I mentioned and more. Yeah. Uh, Wood is uh, you know et cetera are, are 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 sending volunteers. They're helping us with materials. There's suppliers and fabricators who are sending us materials for free. The transportation companies are transporting the skids for us, for these kids. So, you know, it was an idea that born in our business, in our company. Yeah. But believe me, it's not an S&B project. Yeah. Um, you know, I, we rely on, on all of our friendly competitors to help us because they are all, we're all interested in the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have our, our owners, you know, companies that are, that are helping to donate through money and, and donating some, even some of their employees helping to mentor. So it truly is an industry-wide collective effort, and we need... And, and to make it successful, it's a three-legged stool. I have to have schools, I have to have volunteers, and I have to have resources like money and donated materials. I've got a lot of schools interested, but I need more volunteers and I need more materials. So as it grows, I need more of the industry to pour in and help these kids find their way into our industry. We're going to improve that pipeline, and I think this is one of the ways we're going to do it. Great. 
Well, thank you so much. I think our, our audience is going to be really interested not only in hearing about um, kind of S&B and what you guys are doing, but also right. what you're passionate about. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. Thank yeah, you. No, appreciate awesome. it. Thank you.